All right, what's up everybody? We're here to do another Q&A with the Patreon supporters. This is the November edition. And again, first of all, I just wanna thank everyone who's taken the time to support on Patreon. It really means so much. Um, you know, it takes a lot of time to do these things and, you know, I put it out there for free anyway. Uh, but it means a lot to have people want to take this stuff in and and just appreciate what the hard work that goes into it and and supporting and you know it goes a long way and it goes a long way to allowing me to do this more and more um, so thanks again to everyone that supported and everyone that just watches or shares anything or whatever you know every little bit helps and it, it all means a lot even just little comments likes subscribes all that stuff so yeah thank you to everyone but especially my patreon supporters um, and this is a monthly thing that we do where i get kind of questions from them and uh, we just kind of dive into it and i give my my views on some of these things and this month i got some really good questions so we'll just dive straight into it uh, first question comes from Paolo. Paolo's always got good questions. Um, he wants to know, how do you breathe when you dance? How do you control that? Uh, I find myself catching, I, I keep catching myself holding my breath. Um, and that's a really important thing and something that I don't, I don't really concentrate enough like in the moment when I'm when I'm actually dancing uh, but I know that it is a really big habit it's kind of an unconscious thing I think especially when you're starting to learn something and you're really exerting yourself like say you're doing freezes or you're you're doing footwork and you're really not used to it so you're really pushing yourself a really common thing to do is like hold your breath so that it's easier to, to like use your muscles, tense your muscles in, in whatever these positions. Um, but I think a good thing to do is, it's like exercise too. Like if you're doing a push up, you have to control your breathing. Uh, usually you, you breathe out kind of controlled on when you're like exerting yourself. So if you hit a freeze or something, it's probably better to not hold your breath and control your breathing like like a little <sighs> as you catch it um, when you're doing top rock or footwork uh, you, you're probably not gonna be holding your breath but it's good to be aware of your breath the breath is so important um, and it's something that yeah like I said we don't concentrate enough on during the dance um, but I think being aware of it is a huge step um, and a really good way to do that, I think, and maybe this helps unconsciously with when you're dancing, is when you're not dancing, be aware of your breath and try and control it. So one thing that I do kind of when I'm not dancing, like I just did a round or something and I'm in between rounds, is I do try and control my breath. So when, when I'm resting, I might be panting or I might be breathing heavily. I consciously make an effort to control that breath, to slow it down. And it's a technique that my dad taught me is kind of how to go to sleep because sometimes I couldn't sleep. So I'd ask him and then he would tell me this. And all it is is breathing in slowly through your nose. And that was a little fast too. But what you want to do is do it as slow and controlled as possible. Fill your lungs completely and then breathe out through your mouth. And you're consciously trying to make an effort to slow your breath down but still bring in enough oxygen where you're not doing this kind of rushing and panting thing. And that's like a sort of a reflex kind of thing. You kind of you're consciously breaking that and remaining in control. You're not, you're not reverting back to this reflexive kind of um, behavior. So that's something to keep in mind. And I, I think that would help translate into the dance itself. But awareness is a huge part. Yeah, good question. 
Uh, next question comes from Karthik. And Karthik is an, another recent supporter. Thank you, Karthik. And he says, What's the story behind Filthy Feet? Now, I'm not the best person to ask that because I'm, I think, like kind of third generation of the crew. I'm not the original. I'm not one of the originals. Um, so I can only speak on what I know. Some of the people that were there in the beginning are, you know, I gotta maybe get a little interview and, and share the, the real history. But as far as the things that I know, um, the group started in 2001 in Victoria. And during that time, Victoria actually had, Victoria is a, a city in Vancouver, on the uh, city in British Columbia, Canada. And it's an island, it's a city on an island right next to Vancouver. So um, it's a little bit isolated. It takes a few hours to get there by ferry and then drive into the city or take the bus or whatever. Um, but that city used to have a actually a pretty thriving um, breaking scene and like every high school used to have a crew and one of the main staples of the breaking scene during that time was this guy named Steve or Flo and you know we were trying to track this in the past but his he was you know like when you're younger you just kind of like make crews or whatever and so he went through a few crews but eventually um, he joined up with a few other people I believe it was Dylan and Nathan and these are all also original members and I think uh, Ryan and this guy Joe I believe um, and they were all kind of maybe from two or three crews and that's where Filthy Feet started. And the name, as far as I'm aware, came from they were hanging out and they were trying to figure out the name and they just wrote a bunch of random sort of um, like hip hop kind of words or breaking words and just put them in a hat and started pulling them out at random. And Filthy Feet was the one that stuck. And it, it, yeah, it stuck until this day. Uh, but that's the original generation and then there was a second generation with Blink, uh, Robin, Cody and I believe Rory was the same generation as them uh, and that was uh, Downside Up Breakers I think it was their name or something like that. Oh and there was Dave, I think that was around the same time too, Dave. Dave was part of Mad Funk Breakers, uh, now he's a Hollywood man. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so that's kind of the second generation and then the third generation, or I don't know if you want to call it generation, but this third time people got added to the crew where it was me and Mark and that was, shoot, I don't know, like 10, 10 years ago or something like that, more than 10 years ago. And, uh, and then the last addition has been Sosik and Jim. There are younger members, but you can't even say younger because you know they're they're men now. Anyway, yeah, that's kind of the history of the crew and how it got started and how it came to be where it is right now. Uh, but that's definitely something that I have to delve more into to share like the original stories and get those Victoria stories. I've heard them before, but you know. They're like I'd be telling you like secondhand. It's better to get the firsthand stories, and there there's some pretty hilarious stories. Yeah. Uh, next question comes from Jameson, and Jameson, like I said, is another guy. He's a, he was I think the original supporter on Patreon, or one of the first, and he's a guy that has inspired me a lot with the Patreon page and just YouTube and video content always inspiring me to uh, make things better or push things or try th new things so thank you Jameson for you know all your support you, you're a really good friend and you help me out a lot and keep inspiring me so thank you um, his question is what are some key moments people you've met times you felt super stuck events anything in your history that helped you evolve and shape how you approach breaking um, 
I think so there's a few people that I've met um, some of them were workshops so people like bounce people like Ken Swift people like Po one um, they really shaped a lot of how I view the dance and what I think is important so you know just learning from some of the more experienced and kind of older generation people um, really shaped a lot of my views towards the dance but also other people in my crew so guys like Nathan and Mark especially those two they really got me thinking about just thinking differently um, especially Mark when it came to like you know, just how to go about thinking about creativity or whatever and Nathan the same kind of thing Mark is sort of just like um, like just how to think outside the box and then also just flow and just do whatever comes to mind because that's kind of a big part of who Mark is but Nathan he he helped me to kind of see the more artistic side of breaking and just think of it more as an art and less of a less of like a competitive sport or anything like that which isn't to say that that isn't part of breaking but you know uh, he really helped shape that in my head um, as far as events that I've been to the one event that really changed a lot of my views towards breaking was um, outbreak and this isn't the European outbreak but that also was a big part but outbreak USA that they had in Florida and I think I went there like three times because it was so good and every time I went I could take back something something new that I learned uh, that was the first time where I saw like what what a breaking jam should be and think of it more like a jam and less of a competition even though a competition was there um, it, it felt like well they, they had the culture the breaking culture the hip-hop culture was there they had graffiti walls they had DJs that knew how to just play music for a crowd um, they had they cared about atmosphere and so the first two were at that I went to were at a a club called the Roxy and that e even that's a throwback to like a shout out to um, Breaking's history so like the people running this Mex One and everyone involved like they were students of hip-hop of Breaking and they loved it and it really showed with the with the way the event were, um, was set up and that played a huge part in what I think is a good jam and what I if I ever when we threw events our floor horseman event that was part of the influence was was outbreak and the vibe that they that they had when you walk into the venue you just feel something um, yeah so that was a huge part and I would say even just Vancouver Street Dance Festival in more recent years because that epitomizes in a lot of ways to me like what dancing should be it's you have the competition and that's fine but at the end of the day it's about just enjoying music and moving and it doesn't matter if you're a dancer or not like I hate I kind of hate that term dancer like everyone is if you can move to music you're a dancer or you you're dancing right and then some people are just at different levels and, and whatever but you know that's a that's a whole other kind of thing but just that event was so good for just embodying the spirit of what I think dance should be about which is music good music good people no one judging you for whatever you're doing because everyone is just enjoying moving and you're not even really paying attention to who's better or who's worse you're just moving and having fun and and kind of losing yourself and losing letting go of just everything that's kind of your worries or your image of yourself or anything like that and it's a very um, it's, I don't know psychologically freeing thing if you can get to that point not everybody can but 
it's the atmosphere of the event that helps people do that, I think. It's very welcoming, very freeing, very non like judgmental. And I think that that also heavily influenced me on how I throw events and just how I approach dance. And I think another big thing was just Another big thing was just my brother passing away and you know those kind of things like real hardships I guess or tough times in your life they make you reevaluate everything else and kind of what's important and it also or I think you know this is another one that can go forever but really it's kind of a morbid thing but understanding death and and for it to become real in a sense everyone knows they're gonna die but when you really know when it when you see it in front of your eyes that kind of thing someone's actually gone someone that's close to you someone that means a lot to you is gone it really sets this train of thought in motion that like your time is limited it really becomes clear and so then what are you gonna do with that time and it really helped give me a lot more purpose and you know like drive for to do the things that I want to do which is dance and promote dance and get this stuff out there and just educate and get more and more people enjoying this thing that we all love so much so that was a huge I guess eye-opening experience or motivator or whatever to, to do more and share more and you know not hold on to so much to like ego and status and stuff like that and just just share and listen to everyone learn every everything and, and just try and navigate through this this journey or whatever but yeah that was a huge one recently and that also put me on this huge uh, journey of looking at what it, like our brains and, and the psychology of it and more freestyle stuff and what does freestyle even mean what does creativity mean and all this stuff and really just thinking about how we think and kind of getting deeper into that so that was a big one too um, Next question is from Ian Leung, and Ian Leung is another recent member. I've never met him personally, but I'm always so grateful, especially to those people that I've never met directly that want to support, and that those that means so much when when people want to do that. So you know, appreciate that. Appreciate Karthik and, and anyone else who's ever who's ever done that. Um, and Ian, of course. Ian Leung said, asks, Ian Leung asked, what lessons have you learned while traveling, both for competitions and in general? And I think that's a really great question. I think I've, I've kind of addressed this a bit in a few of the interviews that I've done, or talks that I've done. I think traveling is one of the most important things that people can do, especially in our modern like kind of globally connected world so as far as breaking goes you just learn so much more you learn what's out there you learn you get different perspectives you know and I, I mean I don't even want to talk about just breaking because the, the same mentality applies to every single thing everything else like there's so many different ways to approach the same thing and traveling and going to different countries will allow you to to see that to see how people approach say communicating language how they approach art how they approach uh, food how they approach interpersonal relationships how they approach like whatever right their views towards um, nature or history or whatever and you get to see just different perspectives and and it broadens your your views uh, I think it makes you more kind of tolerant of just different different ideas um, 
And a lot of times when you come back, sometimes it can make you even appreciate what you have back at home even more. You know, we, we can grow up with these certain things and take them for granted because that's all we know. And you know, you, you, you don't know anything else until you go out and you see that, hey, you know what, what I have back here is actually really good or, or you know, some aspects of it are, are really good or whatever. And then sometimes you can go travel somewhere and see like, wow, they're doing it this way and that's really cool. And that's it, that can inspire you to bring something back to wherever you are and maybe build something there that, that's filling some need in you, where you're in your area, your hometown or whatever. Um, and so that's kind of like the very general view, generalized version of it. Um, we were talking about specifically like competitions and breaking and things like that. You know, you just see different approaches and different ideas. And this came up with some talks where, you know, especially just chats with some of the older members of the crew in Victoria and when talking about when they started out, like they, they only knew, their starting point was Beach Street and they only knew Beach Street really. And so that was kind of their like foundation and whoever was teaching. And then occasionally they would, they would go travel to Vancouver or Seattle or whatever, some other places, and they would see like this whole other world that exists and different approaches to the dance and different ways of going about it. And it's not necessarily that they would like go and, you know, bite everything or whatever, but it's just you get to see a different perspective. And you know, you never would have thought of doing that. And like, especially back then, you didn't have recorders, so you couldn't remember it exactly. So even your memory, your idea of what that person might have done, you might even be copy, trying to copy it and bite it, but your memory is not perfect and it's probably going to be kind of wrong and kind of different. And that's kind of the beauty in the, of the imperfection of our brains as we remember it. We, we remember things incompletely and then our experiences and our brains will fill in the blanks with whatever we think fits. And that's how you get these completely different things that are that are different from like the original source material. So, you know, it can be really good to have video footage and all that stuff and be able to like really analyze some people. I know there's a lot of people in Japan that do this where they they study like videos and stuff and they learn stuff and it's kind of like biting sort of. But then the good people will rework it and really find their own style but it's kind of like they're learning everything to be able to create all this other stuff um, I don't condone stealing let me just get this straight I don't condone people taking stuff and then just pawning it off as their own and just doing it you have to rework it and that's the key but the point is that sometimes it's better to have incomplete memory and incomplete knowledge to kind of naturally create that flipping and that reworking of a move or a movement or an idea. Um, but you know, that's, anyway, this is getting a little far from the original question. But that's kind of one of the things that you can learn from traveling. It's just different perspectives and different ways of life and approaches. So, and that'll apply to breaking, that'll apply to whatever you're doing, everything. Um, yeah, good question. The last question comes from Yutaka. Yutaka, I think I said this before, but he's one of the first b-boys I ever saw in my high school. And he's, a, he's always out there at jams. Well, not so much now because there aren't any jams, but he's always one of the people out there repping and still to this day dancing and just not doing it for like approval of anybody else, but just kind of for himself. and trying to be free and he's you know I always respect him you know in life and just in, in on the dance floor too but he has some really good questions he asked how do you find your change in environment affects your style and I think you know originally I would say 
Like early on when I was younger, I would say that it didn't affect anything really because I was just memorizing stuff and it was just, okay, I'll do this, this, this. But as I got older, I kind of realized how much like the set, the setting and your mindset going into it will affect things and will affect how you dance. Um, and, and now that I've moved away a lot more from sets and like memorized kind of movement, the environment will affect my style a lot because if you have, if you have a big environment, you should dance big, you should use the space. If you have a small environment, you can't do that same stuff. And, and so your style will kind of adapt to that environment. But the environment is like physical environment, but also the music, it's the like lighting and the, the kind of mood. Well, I guess that's part of feeling. Uh, but you know, um, I, I've talked with Yutaka about this before and he, he brought up some good points that even the time, the, the temporal environment or whatever, um, makes a big difference. Is your mind like in the past? Is it present? Is it thinking about the future? You know, when I was younger, I was always thinking about like, I was planning, you know, I was like, I gotta do this, this, this. So my mind, but that allowed, that didn't allow me to stay in the moment and really listen to the music because I was thinking about what's ahead, what's ahead, what's the next move I gotta do. And so as I've gotten older and I'm less restricted in a sense by sets or being being restricted to having to have that set play out i can break it now and, and branch off into other things and come back to it whatever um, it's a lot easier to just be in the moment and adapt to what's happening right now because that's a big thing like the environment will will definitely change how you dance and and what you do and when you do it and all that stuff but it's if this is a hard question to answer this is a hard thing to understand when you're like really young because you just when you're young in the dance because like you just don't have enough experience and you haven't felt these things like firsthand so and you haven't failed and, and experienced well, what what does it even mean to be in the moment or or being so stuck with a set that you get taken out of the moment and you miss this really obvious part of the song that you could dance to, that you could have hit if you weren't locked into that that way of, that sequence of movements. Um, but yeah, hopefully there was an answer somewhere in there. Definitely the environment changes, uh, this, my style change, adapts to the environment and kind of sum it up like you adapt to, to the physical environment, you adapt to the mental environment, the mood, the lighting, everything will affect things and you can do go through the same sequence of movements in a different setting, in a different time and it'll play out kind of different um, with the different people that are there, you know, everything affects it. So sometimes I think of circles as like their own little, little microcosms of whatever and and or like realities and that's that's the reality that's happening now anyway i'm getting spacey now but hopefully people got something out of that um and he had a second question which is do you sense a correlation between your style and your view on life if there is is it intentional or unconscious um and definitely i think there's a correlation between your views on life and, and people's styles. Um, definitely, I mean, I can't speak for everyone, but I can speak for myself that the way that I think about the dance completely changed after certain, certain moments. And I kind of mentioned this earlier that my brother passing away was a big part of that. And that's when I started to really understand a lot more what it meant to be in the moment what it meant to be 
free to try and free yourself from the judgment of others in the sense of like you're dancing to impress other people rather than just be and do stuff and this sounds like it's really like hippie stuff but when you're doing dancing and especially this kind of dance that's heavily based on freestyle in the moment like the name breaking comes from that it comes from just hearing the music and reacting it's just you snapped and you you went off and you just did stuff like you know it's my yeah so my views have definitely my style has changed a lot and I used to be a lot more like I said planning what am I gonna do I'm gonna have this go down and this middle and this finish and now these days for better or worse but you know honestly I feel a lot better about it uh, the best times that I have are when I ha go in with no plan and just do stuff um, but and I feel worse when I have a plan and and I'm gonna do this and this and this and, and it doesn't feel as authentic anymore so it's definitely changed in, in my views on, on life and being in the moment and, and then you kind of ride that fine line of, of you're planning for the future but you can't plan too far ahead because you don't know what's gonna happen and things can change and, and if you're thinking about like the further away from whatever timeline like the, the harder it is to kind of correct into that, well, that whatever you know you can't plan too far ahead because you don't know what's going to happen and you don't know what's going to change right um, and you're you're drawing from your past experiences but if you're kind of if you're holding on too much to those past experiences you can never really move on you can never stay in the moment because if you think about Time, it's always moving into the future and leaving the past behind so it's never this snapshot that's still and there forever that's a photo you know we're always in motion we're always kind of doing something so you can't really stay in the past right that's that's done it's gone but you draw from that to create your your present based on what you see coming up in the future in the near future Anyway, so a lot of influences from say, meditation and psychology and stuff like that because of you know some life experience and stuff like that. Yeah, so that's it. That's uh, some really good questions. I hope there were some answers in there. It's you guys ask like really deep questions and. It's, uh, it's always hard to figure out how to organize my thoughts about that these things, but hopefully somewhere in my ramblings there's some sense of an answer that will either give you some satisfying feeling that, that your question got answered or it'll make you think about something deeper and want, make you want to ask more and you know we can put that into next month's Q and A. Yeah, so again thank you to all my patreon supporters for yeah just helping me out and being so active on the discord channel and everything and and you know you guys help me re inspire me too and to keep going and think of new ideas and just ways of in engaging with you all directly too and uh, also thank you to anyone who watches just on YouTube and is a subscriber and has liked a video or shared a video or commented or whatever you know everything means a lot that people are engaging in content and and getting something out of it and that's all I really want is even if I only get even if I only reach like one person if that person is like feeling something from it then I've done my job and I've passed on that knowledge some knowledge onto that person and they can take it wherever they want. So, yeah. Thank you to everyone. Thank you. Peace. We'll catch you next month.